Good morning, afternoon, and evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to my week six review of CFL action, including the, oh my God, the banjo bowl, baby. I, I'm so excited to get into this. So let's get into it right now, starting with our first game of the week that happened, or, or weekend, I guess. Uh, that'll be Hamilton versus Toronto. All right, so as I expected in this aspect, a close game. Now, I thought that Hamilton would sneak ahead. Uh, however, uh, Toronto will take this game 17-16. to uh, A very strong game uh, by DJ Foster. I thought uh, Hamilton's run offense was great. Uh, I thought, their, I thought their, um, their throwing offense was good, too. Uh, kind of on par with Hamilton's. No one really... Um, stuck out, I guess. They both they both look pretty pretty good for the most part. Um, uh, a few interesting things that would happen in this game uh, is uh, Hamilton would actually block a Toronto punt, which you don't see block punts happening uh, a lot. And also just the impressive, uh, uh, the, the very impressive uh, Toronto uh, running offense in this game, I really think was uh, what gave them that slight edge. Uh, it was such a close game, uh, but Toronto, as I said uh, before, uh, took this game 17-16, to which will bring us into the Banjo Bowl. So, as you know, Saskatchewan versus Winnipeg. Oh my god. I did not expect this game to be a kind of, a little bit of a blowout by, by how these teams were said to be, you know, neck and neck with each other. You know, Saskatchewan at one point in the season was the team to beat. And uh, I was expecting, you know, I honestly, I honest to God thought we'd go one and one against Saskatchewan. I thought we'd uh, uh, win, probably win on Banjo Bowl and lose the Labor Day Classic. But um, we won that game in the Labor Day Classic. And I was concerned because obviously uh, Saskatchewan... We haven't seen them on the road yet this season, so we have no idea how good they are. And um, wow, uh, th this game as a bomber fan, I was loving this game. Uh, just all all the different things that we were able to do in this game. Uh, I liked it when we uh, when we were about a yard or two yards away, and you'd normally just charge forward and get it. I love how we just took one step back, kept that decent throw in. Uh, great, uh, great throw my by McGuire for that, and especially putting McGuire in. If you're gonna sell it, you have to have McGuire in because if Calero stays in, you know you're not gonna get uh, go for that yard with Calero. You know he's gonna throw. So, um, Saskatchewan once again with no touchdowns. Uh, now two straight weeks without a touchdown, and um, that that that's not acceptable. Like I know, like the Bombers, as we now know, are the best team in the CFL as of right now, with no question. Um, but but no touchdowns for what was said to be the strongest uh, offense in the CFL. That's that's not acceptable. Uh, great defense by the Bombers, as always, because they have the best defense in the league, and they're proving it time and time again. And the Bombers would win this game thirty three to nine, and that will bring us into our next game, uh, the Battle of Alberta, Part Two, Calgary versus Edmonton. So Calgary gets its revenge, and Bo Levi Mitchell is back. Uh, it was a pretty even first half between the two, uh, but right away you can definitely tell that um, the, the injuries that um, Bo Levi Mitchell that had before that were hindering him w was definitely hindering his play quite a bit as he looked uh, much stronger, and the, the rest definitely paid off. And I think, you know, Mayer, while he was in, uh, he did quite good. But um, th this game... Um, Bo Levi Mitchell really showed that, you know, he is that, that starting quarterback and there's no question there. Um, Calgary, like most games that they play, they had a very strong kicking game. Um, their defense actually, I thought was really standout today. Normally it's just their offense that drives their game, but their defense and offense were both in sync with each other. This game was loving that. Um, and Calgary really the fourth quarter of this game, they, they just took off. That's when they really, they, they turned it up to 11 and just pounded straight through and they, they did everything they needed to do. You know, Edmonton had that, that decent first half where they looked to be 
on par with Calgary, but Calgary in the second half, and like I said, specifically that fourth quarter uh, is when they really started to break away and make this uh, not the closest game. So that'll be a 32-16 to win for Calgary. Some great uh, revenge after a disappointing loss to them uh, the prior week. So that will bring us to our last game, Ottawa versus BC. Ottawa, may God have mercy on your soul. Good God. Uh, Ottawa got their shit kicked. Um, I'm, I'm just going to say it. There's no, um, there, there, there's no nice way to put it. Uh, you know, Ottawa, th with management coming out and giving these big promises of success and these big promises of we will turn this around, it's really, I, I think, I, I feel bad for their fans because I'm sorry, but you're being lied to by your organization. This Ottawa team they they don't have what it takes to you know make it to playoffs and uh, and and do anything they're gonna need they gotta fix some issues with their roster um with I, th I thought that Ottawa's D line looked weak today uh not today in th this game though uh, I felt like it looked like an easy game for Mike Riley uh, with all the amount of space and time that he had um he never was really challenged at all uh Burnham you know, has always had, he's been having great weeks, uh, the whole time, but, uh, this is where I felt, I felt this was his strongest game, uh, and Whitehead played fantastic as well, and, uh, it, it seemed like every bit of momentum that Ottawa got, uh, BC would just immediately just squash it and destroy it, um, Ottawa could never slow BC this whole game, and that's why BC was able to escape with the win, uh, not, okay, sorry, not escape, this is why, BC uh, absolutely slaughtered uh, the Red Blacks, uh, 45 to 13. So uh, that will be uh, my review of uh, this week's CFL action. Uh, I'm going to be previewing uh, week seven, as you, of course, know, uh, very soon, probably, hopefully later tonight, hopefully, if possible. I have a, a very busy schedule now at my university is back up and running. So uh, just make sure you tone into that and uh, make sure you like, share, and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys later.